was a kid, five or six, when I made my first steps in fly fishing. I was uh, fortunate to, to grow up here in Overamaga, right next to this famous river called the Amar. And uh, sort of an uncle to me, uh, always took me fly fishing when I was uh, a kid. You know. We used to, we used just to, to head to the Amar, watch the river for a while, and uh, when we saw fish uh, rising, we would start fishing, otherwise we would go for mushrooms. <laughs> I studied forestry management in Munich at the university and then uh, went to Canada for quite a while to the north, to the Yukon and to uh, BC and this actually was the very beginning of my professional career as a fly fisher uh, because over there I met the, the pros, the guides and uh, I was uh, I was, I, I remember I was very impressed uh, what knowledge about the whole sphere of fly fishing these guys had back then. Yeah. And uh, when I came back, I met my wife and then we started the fly fishing school over Bayern, yeah, which is now almost 20 years back. Yeah. Back then in these days, Fly fishing was a sport for the locals, I would say. We didn't have many tourists fly fishing here. We didn't have any, any guys coming into the region because they wanted to fly fish here. But this has dramatically changed now. Yeah, I mean, the Northern Alps are um, famous for this gin clear uh, uh, water and uh, the small creeks, the rivers, the, the high alpine lakes. And today I would say uh, it's almost 50-50. I mean, when it comes to how many locals are fly fishing and how many guests do we have over the year, over the season, who come to fly fish. You know, you know, it's really changed. I enjoy being at the water with my dog or alone or whatever, you know, watching the birds, watching the insects. And uh, I think that's what fly fishing should be, you know. It should be a means to just uh, transform into um, a positive, relaxed mind. Yeah. The most important thing that many of my clients um, take from fly fishing, from a day of fly fishing, transformation into a very relaxed state of mind. Yeah. Mountain hunting and fly fishing uh, have a lot of uh, uh, things in common. That's, that's certainly true, Leonard. I mean, uh, for both, let's call it sports, you have to have the right frame of mind to begin with. Yeah. And uh, it takes a lot, a lot of experience to be successful. And, uh, well, I would say Mountain hunting to a huntsman is what fly fishing is to an angler. Yeah. Soon as I leave the, the road and I uh, enter the woods, go on my hunting trail, transformation takes place. You're a completely different person. It's just my dog and me. This is, Leonard, something that brings a lot of uh, um, people into our sport these days. Yeah. They were surfing, they were sailors, they were doing this and that and this and that. But still, they come here and say, you know what my problem is? 
I was uh, surfing in blah 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 and was still thinking about my business. Huh? I hope to get rid of this in fly fishing. And this is certainly true. This is one of the big assets of our sport. Uh, because we have a very technical aspect, casting. It's impossible to make a difficult cast and think about your work back home. It's, it's just impossible. Yeah. Good thing. <laughs>